At this stop, we'll compare the sounds of three different sizes of clarinet. A piccolo clarinet in G, two E-flat clarinets, one of brass and one of ivory, and a B-flat clarinet. First, we'll hear the G piccolo by Johann Simon Stengel, number one in this case and one of the smallest clarinets in use. The G clarinet became popular in Vienna in 1879 when the brothers Johann and Jakob Schrammel began using it in their dance quartet. The following piece, Vergis mein nicht Blumchen, was written by the band's contra guitar player Anton Strohmeyer. Dennis Cinelli on the contra guitar accompanies William McCall on the clarinet. People tend to think that an instrument's material has a strong effect on its sound qualities, but in fact, the influence of the material is small. The differences in sound largely depend on dimensions, on the length of the instrument, the diameter of the bore, and of its tone holes. We will now compare two clarinets of the same length, pitched in E-flat, numbers 4 and 6 in the case. First. Here is Sultz's warm and mellow metal clarinet, number four, in a rendition of two English folk songs, Lord Foppington and the Physical Snob. In contrast, the ivory clarinet produces a loud, sharp, and more penetrating sound, not because of the ivory, but because of several dimensional characteristics and its particular mouthpiece. Here is the famous solo for E-flat clarinet from The Witch's Sabbath Dream in Hector Berlioz's Symphonie Fantastique. The piece is intended to have a furious, demonic character. As in all instrument making, small, often invisible physical differences generate great changes in sound quality. The metal clarinet is about one millimeter narrower in both its finger holes and its bore, or inside diameter. There are also slight differences in the dimensions of mouthpiece and reed. Now look at number seven, the B-flat boxwood clarinet by Charles Roth. The B-flat clarinet is the most commonly used clarinet, and it owes its permanent place in the orchestra to its gentle and charming velvety sound. This example has a timbre that musicians have dubbed fat, full, and mellow. We'll now hear the A theme from Carl Maria von Weber's first clarinet concerto of 1811, 
followed by parts of the C theme of the third movement. Alto clarinets and basset horns, both in this case, have the same pitch, but they differ appreciably in timbre. The alto clarinet was developed in the beginning of the 19th century for military and band music. It has a wider bore and wider finger holes than the basset horn, and thus a fuller and open sound. This is especially true of instrument number 10, the alto clarinet by Wernicke. Listen now as William McCall plays the once popular tune, The Carnival in Venice. The basset horn evolved in the 18th century as an instrument for chamber and orchestral music. Its gentle and delicate sound attracted many composers, among them Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He began writing for basset horn in 1781, at the time when the angular horn came into use in Vienna. One of his signature pieces for basset horn is the aria Non più fiori from his 1791 opera La Clemenza di Tito. Here are two snippets from this aria played on the basset horn made by Friar, number 14 in the case. The soft, gentle sound of the basset horn belongs to the era of late sensualism and early romanticism. One piece, dating from 1823, that cultivates sensitivity and a warm, charming sound, is a sonata of 1823 by Franz Danzi, Op. 62 for basset horn and piano. In the following selections, William McCall plays the basset horn by Friar, No. 14. Jonathan Hall accompanies him on the Ferdinand Hoffmann Grand Piano of 1790, which is also on display in this gallery. 